welcome back to the channel. It's a rainy July day. Uh, the remnants of Hurricane Barrel are here in Missouri, and I'm bench racing. So I've got got the old laptop out, pulled up the old Dino 2000 program. It's like, I don't know, 25 years old or so, but I've had it on a number of computers, and I've kept a copy so that even though I get, you know, Windows 7 or Windows 10 or whatever, I still have a copy to work with, and it's pretty good. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's better than talking to your pros that have real software that's more up to date than this but these models are pretty good like this is my engine it says I, I should make 70 768 horsepower at 6500 um, and that was very close we made like 766 or something like that and then here though it was a little bit generous with the torque numbers of 705 foot-pounds we never got close to that but we made good torque I want to say in the 670 range so pretty close, not perfect, but a ballpark. I mean, it's really what what I use this as a tool, just as a ball, ballpark. And uh, it has a lot of features, so I can put any, you know, any bore size, any stroke. Um, you can get more detailed, like in the cylinder head ranges here. This is real flow data. I had my heads flowed uh, back when I had the 225 intake valve. It's currently a 230, and just for purposes, I put that in here. Uh, but the flow data matches the 225 valve. So I didn't add, you know, 4 or 5 CFM or whatever I think a 230 valve would be. I just left it where it was um, because that's, those, that's the information I knew. So I just left it there. Uh, if you look at the camshaft, you can get really specific. Um, your LSA, your center line, of course your duration and lift values. It'll, it'll determine and calculate... Uh, the intake open and closing events and it, it matches the cam card it's pretty much dead on um, you can either input just like your typical compression ratio or if you have like blueprinted data from your builder you could just throw it in here and it'll be <clears throat> pretty much spot on I think it's easier to throw your compression in or what you believe your compression is than trying to build it out it's pretty complicated sometimes with the the compression stuff um, induction here I say I got a 1050 carb, which I do, and then a single plane manifold, large tube, open headers. This is how I run the car, and that's how it dynoed. Again, very close to what I have. So today, I was bench racing, and I really wanted to know. Okay, somebody on a clearance rack had a solid, solid roller cam, and I'm like, what would that do with this combo? So I went ahead and built that out, and it was a little bit better. Um, the lift on my current cam is 665, and then if we go over here, the new cam would be 765. So 665, that's a considerable amount of lift change. But um, it's carrying power out here really to 7500, which I don't touch those type of RPMs on the track. Right now I'm hydraulic roller, and so really keeping it under 7 seems to be the happiest so far, but we'll, we'll see what happens there. But I was also looking on Marketplace and somebody had an 1180 carb and I'm like, whoa, what would an 1180 carb do? So the wheels are in motion, the gears are grinding, we're just trying to figure out what what little changes can I make, or big changes for that matter, if I want to go with that other engine uh, that I have. I've got a 540 short block, basically it's a 4.5 bore uh, Edelbrock block that Blueprint engines uh, cast for them, but 9.8 deck. I've been sitting on this for a couple of years, I want to get it before uh, everybody went crazy with their block prices. So it's kind of sitting at, uh, at the machinist waiting for me to make up my mind. And I talked to Straub today about maybe a cam for that, but I don't know, kind of with the supply chain, if I really have enough time for that. But here we are. We're looking at some data and uh, debating this cam uh, over here. Let's go ahead and make this full screen. This one here is really, depending where you look, as much as 50 horsepower more, just depending on the RPM where you're checking it. Uh, it comes on a little bit later. doesn't make quite the torque that the other one does, which is okay because I don't want to shock the tires on the small tire. I, I'm almost okay with it being a little bit easier out of, out of the hole. But it's supposed to be somewhat nitrous friendly. I think I talked to them today at Howard's. This is a Howard's cam. Um, they said a 300 shot for sure and then maybe, you know, just keep an eye on it going over that amount. So I'm really curious and I hate to put that kind of money out there, but that's what bench racing's for, right? I can just throw it in this program, and I could believe this is right or this is wrong. I don't know. Let's just pump in a number here. Let's say I was looking at that 1180 CFM carburetor, and really that's kind of what uh, 
one of these other calculators that tells you RPM and displacement, how many CFM you should have in a carb, and I really should be a little bit bigger carb than I have. But that moves the needle even higher. It takes it up to basically 800 horse, and I could do the same with the other. I can go back to, okay, what would my current 496 do if it had an 1180 carb? Boom, just one little parameter change, and it, it likes it to the tune of about 10 horsepower at 6,500, uh, 763, I'd have to kind of stack these up against each other, but it picks up, right? And it probably does need a little bit more carburetor than it has. Uh, I do not run a Dominator. It's a 1050, 40, 150, so maybe the plenum uh, would make a difference. I think right now the thing that about my car is the 60 foot's a little bit lame um, without nitrous, and it's probably more to do with the converter than anything, but it does seem like uh, a carb is another place I could consider making some adjustments but I have this thought I'd throw out a quick video uh, I did want to gauge some interest so if you have a build coming up and you f you subscribe to the channel um, and you feel like you're interested in having me throw this stuff in there but I'm gonna need some real information I need to know you know the valve sizes the bore the stroke the compression you're thinking about the carb you're gonna run type of intake etc and as close is detailed information about a camshaft that you're thinking about and the actual airflow numbers of cylinder heads because that's very is vital I mean those without those parameters this thing will be way off so I just wanted to see if if people are interested maybe I'll put out an email address or something people can throw their information in there and I'll just whip out uh, a name out of a hat kind of a drawing deal and just maybe once a week every other week something like that just depends on the kind of interest there is um, throw it out there make a quick little video say hey this is John Doe's engine he's thinking about doing this and maybe some of you are thinking about that camshaft and so when you see it on this channel you're like oh hey I kinda wondered what that would look like didn't cost me anything to do it just had to ask Big Block Bob to do it and with that we're at the part of the video where I ask you to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already uh, like comment again this is gonna be driven by you the viewer so if I have a lot of interest in this I'll certainly consider, like I said, putting out uh, an email address. You saw the information I'll need, um, and we'll consider if if there's enough interest that I would have to pull names out of a hat versus kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis. This is not going to be 100% accurate. This is kind of just for fun, but at the same time, it should get you pretty darn close to what you think you're building. Um, again, I'm not going to guarantee if you put certain parts together that you're going to make, let's say, 750 on this program. Uh, you go to your machine shop, they do it, you dyno it, it makes 700 or, or less even, who knows. Um, but again, this is a, this is a ballpark, uh, something for fun, some bench racing stuff on the days where we can't get out to the track or maybe the garage is too, too steamy and humid for us to go out there unless we want to sweat, you know, like crazy. So just thought I'd take advantage of this quick opportunity today. I'm going to get back to editing on the video for Rocky Mountain Race Week, how we came from behind. But again, this is just something I wanted to put together real quick here today, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks.